Hey guys, how you doing? Um, thought I'd do some tips and tricks for Master of Orion. Conquer the Stars. Or Moo 2016, whichever you prefer. Um, so this is a, a later game. You can see I'm on turn 406. I've been playing a while. Uh, this is on very hard. This is uh, one step below the highest difficulty. And so some tips and some tricks. Uh, so this is where I started. And um, you're going to start off with a colony ship, two scouts, and a frigate. I recommend that you be very careful with your scouts when you start scouting because uh, pirates will uh, knock them out. Um, you know, send your frigate scouting mostly. Um, usually I send a scout and a frigate together, and then if I detect any anomalies, I send the scout after the anomalies. Those anomalies can be very healthy or help helpful early so just be very careful with your scout ships um, build your fleet up pretty quickly especially destroyers because you need bombs to take out pirate bases um, squishing pirate bases is really productive early on you can get um, early pop and early money uh, from squishing pirate bases and it's pretty easy to do what I like to do when I'm scouting early <coughs> I try to get out as quickly as I can and claim territory as fast as I can by blocking it with military outposts. <coughs> it's been my experience that for the most part the computer won't attack you if you're not too crazy aggressive. This is where I initially expanded so I choked choked off this lane here, this lane here, and that isolated this system and I grabbed this one and this one because I ran into the Sakura really early. <coughs> so get your systems claimed early um, don't don't try to uh, fill up a system with colony ships uh, just grab one planet and get those those outposts down so you can um, you know because by grabbing this and this I was able to get the the uh, glee system all to myself which had a nice juicy um, uh, a secondary sieve that I was able to invest in and they helped my economy early. Um, okay, so next tip that I would recommend. Um, it comes down to ship design. <coughs> uh, missiles. Missiles are great early to mid game and even in the late game. I mean, I still have ships with, with plenty of missiles. Um, you can see my, my frigates are still rocking missiles. My destroyers are still... These are um, Xeon missiles. This is the top tier missile. Uh, my crews are still rocking missiles. No, I haven't. I haven't converted them to Merv yet. I'm still playing around with that. Um, here's my uh, missile battleship, and then here's my beam battleship, and my Titan is all beams. And so I recommend missiles uh, early to mid game. And then what I'm thinking as I'm playing is I want to find Orion okay so you want to find the Orion system and figure out where it is and you want to plan your strategy around dealing with the Orion Guardian I don't I don't know if the AI goes for the goes for the Orion Guardian I have never seen it but I've only played uh, let me see this is my eighth game since I came back and I think I played three or four games, maybe maybe five games when it first came out, and those were all on normal. Um, I've never seen the computer take out the Orion Guardian. I don't know for a fact they will or won't. I've just never seen it. But what I do is I try to plan for, um, this was the Cylons territory, and so what I did was I declared war on the Cylons pretty early and pushed through here and got the, the Akam Akamar system and that guaranteed me access to Orion. And then my rule of thumb is um, 1200 attack, 1200 defense, and then I go for it. Um, I save my game just in case things go poorly. Um, so, you know, uh, and what you're trying to do is you want to get the death ray. It's, it's awesome. Uh, so take a look at my Titan. Here's the death ray. Uh, you get this from the Orion Guardian. It's the best beam weapon in the game. It's fantastic. Uh, and then, of course, and I, I don't bother with 
with beams or energy weapons or particle weapons or I run all missiles until I deal with the Orion Guardian and then I start uh, converting to death ray ships um, I, I wholeheartedly believe in building to type and so I, I build missile boats and so a missile boat is going to have Dauntless, which is absolutely critical. You must have the Dauntless guidance system. It, it's just fantastic. And then eventually I want fast missile racks on my missile boats, those that can carry it. Um, and of course I'll make a liar myself here because this cruiser doesn't have it, but I like fast missile racks. Um, they're, they're really nice, really ups your rate of fire, you know, by 33%. So. Um, but then once you get beams, what you're looking for is this little gem right here, the high energy focus. So this should be a a, uh, a critical research node. Uh, you want to get your high energy focus. Uh, I'm not gonna say as soon as possible, but it's really important. And you want uh, HyperX capacitors. These are awesome. Um, the other problem with beams is at long range they're inaccurate. And so what I do to help mitigate that. Is I go with the range master targeting unit and it helps it helps I don't know if it helps a lot but it helps it, it helps those long because you see the, um, the the death ray can reach out to 90 and so to do that um, you need as much accuracy as possible for it to actually connect and I'll, I'll show you an action I'll, I'll show you these monsters in action here in just a second um, so yeah missiles early to mid and then once you take out the Orion Guardian, then you want to start thinking about transitioning to beams, specifically death rays. Um, put them in 360 mounts on these bigger ships. On smaller ships like frigates and destroyers, if that's what you like, um, you could go with a uh, front facing to save on space. Cruisers is a little... Eh, you know, cruisers are not as maneuverable as destroyers and frigates. But they're more maneuverable than battleships and titans, obviously. I haven't experimented with front-facing only beam weapons. I have made beam cruisers, but I gave them 360 mounts. Uh, the beam cruisers were very effective. Uh, they didn't do uh, heavy enveloping like I do on my titan, because the titan is huge. Um, but you'll notice, uh, so even the battleship has heavy enveloping death rays. Uh, another tip for your ships, you're going to need bombs. Um, I've experimented with the biological weapons, and I think they stink. Um, they, uh, you take a significant uh, diplomatic hit for using them, and they just don't work that well. Um, bombs are more effective. And the other thing about bombs is you need them to take out these secondary structures, these advanced military outposts, warp gates, um, Oh yeah, um, asteroid bases, um, uh, uh, superstellar gas harvesters, harvesters for your enemy. You need bombs to do that. So if you're just packing uh, biological weapons, then it's not going to work. Uh, okay, so those are the tips for your ships. Um, let me show you my ships in action, and we'll talk about tactical combat. And I've got some tips and tricks there that I use. This is a nice mixed fleet here, and so I've got beams, I've got my missile cruisers. Yeah, I've got a lot of beam battleships and a lot of missile cruisers, and so um, this is a pretty good fight. So uh, you can see the, the Alcari have stacked heavily into defense. Don't do that. It, it doesn't. It, it can work early, but later, once firepower starts to creep up, I just, you, you, you'll see, I just chew through these guys. Um, so we'll do um, take command. And I, I do the assisted command. So the uh, computer manages. Okay, so the problem here is the cruisers move a lot more, a lot more quickly than the battleships. Um, all things being equal, I like my ships massed. And so what I'll do a lot of time is I'll just grab them all, hit H, let everybody pause. So now everybody's movement is off. And then sometimes what I'll do is I'll bring my battleships up into these gaps, kind of like linebackers on a football team. And I'll, I do this for maximum defense. This way everybody's point defense is supporting everyone else's. And then grab everybody 
and then H. Have them hold. Now, the enemy is splitting, and you can. So watch this. I'm gonna just chew them to pieces. Look at that. That's those death rays. Now this guy's taking a lot of damage, so what I'll do is I'll pull him back. So that he doesn't just focus fire down. Look at that. They're just ferocious. Okay, his shields are back up now. So now we aggressive. Ooh, get over there. They're kinda sluggish. Look, he's got energy focus. Ion pulse beams. Those aren't bad. They're they're no death rays, but they're not bad. Uh, he's got a lot of point defense. Oh wait, yeah, those are point defense. Yeah. Okay. That didn't be good. And so you can see how absolutely devastating the fast fire of those, of those death rays is. Um, so sometimes what I'll do is I will move. Uh, I'll have my cruisers go one way, my battleships go another, um, especially if I'm defending a convoy. But a lot of the time, I will just turtle like that and let them come to me and slaughter them. Um, okay, so the next tip. You want to look for multi-planet systems, like Glee here. Um, and when you see a multi-planet system like this, you want to start thinking about uh, exporting production. Okay. And you get that from this little guy, right? Where is it? Hello? Okay, where'd it go? There's a um, interplanetary, whatchamacallit, and it allows you to import... Um, I don't know why it's not showing here. Huh. Weird. Uh, is that it? No? Oh, I did. I got a scroll. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Interplanetary administration. That's what you want. So you build this on the planet you want to produce things. Uh, normally for me, this will be the biggest planet because pop, pop is king in this game. So, you know, getting more more population and is is better is better than anything else. Get your population up as quickly as possible, as high as possible. But also you want to pay attention to your rich, your your mineral um, rating. Because that will predicate how productive your production slots are. And so in this case, I had a nice medium planet with rich. And then the other planets in the system weren't that sexy. Okay, you can see this one's small. <coughs> and these have been difficult to get along, to bring along. And so what you do is you you build the interplanetary um, administration on the main planet, and then these other planets, you can now export production to them. And that is how I've able to get, I'm able to get my hammers up to 159, and I can crank out Titans pretty quickly. So if you want to make Titans and Doom Stars, you need um, multi-planet systems with, um, and then you need to do this focus production uh, next tip. Uh, let's go into tech here. Research continues as expected. Okay. And then in the tech, you're looking for... Where is it? Is this it? No. Further back. You're looking for warp gates is what you want. Uh, I keep forgetting what it's called. It's warp gates. Nope. Way back here. No, I, <laughs> I went too far. Um, where the heck are warp gates? No. Yeah. No. All right. Now I can't find it. I was just thinking about it. Now I can't find it. Anyway, you want to prioritize uh, warp gate technology so that you can boat around quickly and get to the enemy and I can't remember the name of the node <laughs> I'm sorry I'm a total idiot it's in here <laughs> is that it? 
It allows ships to travel through. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So multi-state insulator under electromagnetic refraction. And then here's here's the ability. To, so um, these are very important. And then you build these warp gates. And it allows you to hop around much more quickly. Uh, very important tech, uh, really. Now, again, I'm a warmonger. So some of these tips might not be applicable to you if you play the diplomatic game or if you play uh, if you go for a science victory or something like that um, um, but I always go to war I just I enjoy it it's funny I watch I watch a lot of Star Trek and I love Starfleet and all their diplomacy and all that good stuff and being nice and then I don't play Master Brian that way <laughs> I'm a total scumbag when it comes to playing Master of Orion. Um, so, yeah, you need, um, you need warp tech, you need these warp gates. That, that's an important one. Um, obviously, um, Research continues as ex the, uh, <coughs> in my opinion, missiles are super important. I love missiles. They're very effective. Um, Merv versus non-Merv because that's really what it comes down to. Should you upgrade your previous generation, or should you, I think you use the latest, highest tech missile you have? Um, it's not as important <coughs> to Merv them, especially the Xeons. The Xeon missiles are just devastating. I have seen situations last game. I had a mid-game battle. And the computer had countered my missiles pretty well, and they had stacked a lot of um, point defense. And the only way I could get past that battle was to upgrade my ships to um, MERV missiles. So um, I've seen a lot of debate online: MERV versus non-MERV mis missiles. Is it worth it? Because of course they increase the mass of the missiles. Um, I've seen some people talking about how uh, the MERV warheads don't work as well against the higher level shields. So that's something to think about. If your opponent has really good shields, you might not want to go with MERVs. Um, if they use a lot of point defense, then you might want to go with MERVs because, of course, they split into four uh, pretty close to the target, and that's more of a challenge for the point defense weapons to, uh, to handle. Um, I usually go MERV until I get to Xeons. And then I kind of, I kind of uh, check to see what the computer's doing. Um, if they're not countering my missiles, then I'll just stay standard and keep huge numbers of launchers. If they're countering my missiles, then I might consider going to Mervs. I've never seen armored and the uh, the anti ECM ones, the ECCM, I guess it will be. I, I've I've never seen that be an issue. Uh, that doesn't mean it can't. It just I haven't seen it. Um, I, I'm, I'm not the end-all, be-all of uh, Master of Orion expertise. That, that much is certain. There are people who, are, who know more about this game and are better than me. I'm just giving some basic tips and tricks for folks that watch my stuff. Um, and one thing I would recommend when you're building your colonies and getting them going early on, food. You know, you really want to get the food going to get the growth up because your your growth rate is predicated on how much food you're producing. So produce more food, your your pops will grow quicker. Um, <coughs> another thing that ties into this is espionage. Espionage is super important. Don't ignore this. It's really important. Um, you're, you need to get a counter-espionage agent up, trained, and leveling up as fast as possible. Uh, save them to defend your your homeland against you uh, against enemy spies. You need to, to be running counter espionage. Uh, once your economy is strong enough to support a second agent, get that second agent trained, and then by then hopefully your your first agent will be let's hope third level. And then what I do is I start infiltrating empires. And I'm trying to sniff out who has uh, low protection, and so I'll 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 go from empire to empire until I see steel low is usually what I'm looking for. I mostly steel. 
Um, and so I steal tech for most of the gang, and eventually I overtake the AI, and they no longer have any tech for me, and then I start assassinating their leaders. Um, I did this for probably a hundred turns, where I was assassinating leaders, and then I began to see the Alkari and the Sakra with some new tech, so I switched back over to steel for a little while. Eventually you'll get a message saying, this empire no longer has any technology to steal, and then I switch back to assassination. Um, I don't do this stuff here <coughs> because the risk is high and it's it's usually quite difficult to infiltrate an individual colony and then do sabotage or contaminate or revolt. Um, I, like I said, I usually just steal and assassinate leaders because, you know, killing some of their better leaders can really hurt them. Um, let me see, we've covered basic ship design, we've covered uh, tech. We've covered missiles versus beams. I mean, I literally don't use any of the other beams. I don't even touch them. Not even phasers. Um, I have I have experimented with phasers on on many games, and they have not impressed me. So that's why the way I play is I basically go missiles, and I'm looking for Orion, and then I get Orion, and I get the death rays, and I never look back. Um, uh, see if I can think of something else that's semi-useful to useful to you. Uh, do, 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 do. Um, I don't like small ships. That doesn't mean they suck. I just don't like them. I like the big ships. Um, like I said, I like Star Trek. I like Star Wars. So, you know, the Enterprise, the Enterprise E, the Sovereign, um, Star Destroyers, you know, yeah, cool. Big ships, lots of guns. Um, if the enemy starts to go heavy into torpedoes, you might want to rethink that because the, tor the, the semi-tracking torpedoes can wreck your capital ships. Uh, I haven't seen the computer go heavy into torpedoes. I have seen them use torpedoes. Um, but from what I've seen, the computer tends to go balanced between energy weapons and missiles. And when I say energy weapons, I mean beams and... and uh, kinetic energy weapons, you know, the, the mass the mass drivers, the Gauss rifles, that type of thing. Um, so they usually go balanced. Um, I haven't seen the computer commit, you know, fully to beam or fully to missile. So I don't know if they do. And I don't play multiplayer. I'm not, I'm not interested. I, I, I have no interest in multiplayer. And I'm, I'm sure that's a, that's a whole different can of worms. Oh, make sure you give <coughs> many of your ships bombs so that you can take planets or destroy planets or you know whatever um, I do have dedicated uh, um, dedicated DPS you know uh, ship to ship designs um, but that frustrates me because um, it, it frustrates me because um, sometimes I'll forget that I have a dedicated ship to ship design with no bombs and then I send them into orbit of a planet, and I can't do anything. So I tend to try to at least give everybody one antimatter bomb, um, and I, I I keep my bomb tech up to date because a lot of the times when the research tree you you have to pick from two or three choices, and a lot of times it's a beam weapon or kinetic energy weapon or a bomb, and I usually just take the bomb because I love the death rays. And I don't see any use for anything other than death rays because they're absolutely fantastic. I mean, look at the range: 90 hit rate, 91 percent. Uh, yes, please. <laughs> um, so um, I usually don't build Doom Stars because they're so ridiculously just hugely expensive to manufacture. Um, pollution can be a problem. You got you have to watch watch that. And you have to be aware Research of continues as ex <clears throat> this choice. Is it here? Yep. Okay. Tectonic engineering. Never, ever, ever, ever select deep core mine unless you're playing a race with good, um, with good um, pollution resistance or tolerance or whatever. Okay. Um, I play the I play a custom human race because I like the human ships. 
Um, and I always go uh, plus to pop growth, plus to production, and plus to research. And that gives me 10 points. Um, so I always go core weight, core weight stuff. I have to. Um, if you if you play a pollution tolerant race, then you could go deep core mine. So that might give you more production. I don't know. I haven't tested that. Um, and see. oh, diplomacy. Okay. So trade agreements. Wow. Trade agreements are so important. Um, let me see. Oh, we're with everybody. <laughs> so nobody will talk to me. <laughs> you <laughs> see. Okay, so trade agreement. So it'll tell you how much it's going to cost. So in this case, uh, 1453 is what you need to, to sign this. And he has to have it too. Okay? Trade agreements are always worth it. Early, early to mid game, spam them. Spam those trade agreements. Get as, I, I usually have five if I can. I have as many trade agreements running as I can. Um, currency is so helpful to kickstart colony growth, um, buying structures. I usually don't buy ships unless it's an emergency. But um, kickstarting that economy, buying that first, um, that first uh, automated factory, buying those first um, uh, farm improvements, uh, super, super critical. Um, anything else? Yeah. I did plan, but I guess I didn't plan enough. I think that's all the stuff I wanted to talk about. Um, uh, if, if anybody has any questions, just throw them in the comments or, uh, you know, let me know and I'll, I'll do my best to answer them or look them up. Um, <coughs> but yeah, that's it. Tips and tricks from Master of Orion. And if I think of anything else, I'll make another video. Thanks for watching.